I'm at the Fox Theater. I can't believe this. Usually I'm dropping off my friends down here, off on the side of the road. Also, I'm really feeling like the Clampets right now from Beverly Hillbillies with this thing right here. This is the second time I've actually operated this and yesterday was rehearsal, so bear with me. But I wanna say greetings. My name is Shamayim Harris, AKA Mama Shu. Um, I am a mother. I'm a minister, I'm a community uh, organizer, I'm an activator, I'm a creatress in my town. Some of the other things that I've done, I've served 27 years with uh, the school system here in Detroit. Um, I'm a Highland Park Housing Commissioner. I used to do that before, I did that for two years. Um, I'm also a reserve police officer for the Highland Park Police Department. Yeah. And I'm also the first woman chaplain for the Highland Park Police Department ever in its history. Yeah, now that's real cool. That's real cool. Um, I'm also the charter commissioner in charge of writing the charter for uh, Highland Park, so we're doing that right now. So I do a bunch of things, but one of the things that I'm mainly doing is that I'm building a village. I am building Avalon Village. So most of my inspiration most of my inspiration from this project came from this little cute brown boy right here. This is my baby, Jacoby Ra. He became an ancestor September the 23rd, 2007. He was two years, one month, and six days old, and he was hit by a hit and run driver. Basically, that was the worst thing imaginable for a parent. Um, I don't know of anybody who has lost a child or thought about loss to the child and uh, the, the grief that it could cause, but actually you can get through it, because look at me now. You can live with a broken heart, but it doesn't have to break your spirit. You can go on, you have to find somewhere to channel that energy. So what I did was I chose pain to change pain into power, my grief into glory, and my loss into love. What I'm doing is I'm using all of the energy that I could muster up from that experience, and it actually gave me wings. It gave me wings to fly. And basically, I'm using it to serve my community in and to go further, to heal myself, because this is a healing process as well, and also to make my neighborhood strong. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Highland Park, Michigan. Highland Park was the city of trees, beautiful trees. It's the home of the Model T. Uh, we have beautiful homes uh, on our block. We have, it's just a beautiful city and we were known for our um, school system, excellent school system. People used to move to Highland Park for the school system. Right now, Highland Park still has some wonderful places in it beautiful spots in it, but a lot of it looks like this, unfortunately. Some of our schools have closed. Our high school just got tore down a couple of months ago. Um, they repossessed our street lights uh, back in 2011. Um, there's a lot of blight right now. This, like I said, the library has been closed for 15 years. A lot of people left Highland Park, but I decided to stay. I wanted to stay and basically to give back and help to restore and resurrect my neighborhood in Highland Park. We deserve to have a quality living experience like other neighborhoods. Right here, this is one of my most proudest things. Thank you. This is one of my most proudest things. We put our first solar street light, residential street light, I should say, is inside of Avalon Village. And uh, it was erected in 2014 on my son Jacoby Ra's birthday, which is August the 17th. Uh, it's community owned and operated, and we have no bills at all to pay for this light. So it shines every single night. Jacoby Rock Park, we uh, basically recycled blighted lots and abandoned lots, and we created a safe space for children and for families to play. We do a lot of different activities like reggae in the hood, hood camp, we give out school supplies, I marry folks in the, uh, in, uh, in the park. We do a lot of activities and different things for the community, and a lot of people just come and come chill. So this is a photograph right here of me kind of bossing folks around like I do in the village anyway, point and do this, do that. But that house right there is our homework house. Our homework house was uh, on the demolition list, but we just took charge of it and wanted to build something for the children. Uh, it's a space to uh, 
for the children to do their homework, for the children to eat. We're going to have a computer lab. We have a, a, a recording studio in there. There's a laundry room, things like that. It's just a bunch of stuff there that we're building for the children, uh, activity courts, all kinds of things there to help the children have a wonderful life, help let, let them have a wonderful quality living experience in their own neighborhoods. One of the great things that we've done, too, is that we've raised over $240,000 on our Kickstarter to start this project, and we're still going. Yeah, that was kind of cool. God, we have other plans, the Goddess Marketplace, we have the activity courts, basketball, tennis, and volleyball courts. We have the Healing House. Um, uh, we also have the Blue Moon Cafe and building a greenhouse as well. All of this in Avalon Village. And we have plenty more to bring to the world to help to show that you can also restore your neighborhood. So then this happened about two weeks ago. <laughs> right. Ellen found out the work that we were doing and she was very excited and she had us come on the show and then she gifted me with this right here, a $100,000 house. Yeah, yeah. And the house will be used as a headquarters for Avalon Village and a welcome center at administrative offices. Uh, this day was very, very special. This was a ribbon cutting. Our mayor was there. On September the 23rd, we actually had a soft grand opening of the Avalon Village and specifically the Homework House. I want to leave you with a few things uh, that I've actually uh, collected throughout this journey. Basically, I want for my neighborhood what I want for myself. I don't want to look at mattresses. I don't want to look at blight and toilets and things like that. I want the beautiful life. That's what I deserve. I won't be living like that. Also, some people uh, look for a beautiful place. I chose to make a place beautiful. There was blight. There was something to do. They say it takes a village to raise a child. Well, I think that we need to build villages worthy to raise our children in. The day that my son died, uh, we used to have conversations about children uh, dying, me and my friends, like, oh my God, and we would think it was so terrible. And then basically, when I woke up the next morning, that was something that I feared, my fears were over because I lasted the night that I slept when he, when he died. And I knew that I was basically invincible. I just knew that I was the stuff then. And basically, I had no fear of anything else. And I encourage you to have no fear in any and everything that you choose to do. You can do it, you can work through it. Thank you, peace and love, and remember, have no fear.